Hello YouTube, welcome to this video. This is the first edition of that case profile series that I want to run on the channel. This series is going to be focused around YouTube fitness personalities. Most of the time people that I have a lot of knowledge about because I've been consuming their content for a few years, if not more. I don't want this series to be a call out series. I do not want this series to be something used to attack people. So I'm going to introduce a rule right now regarding these individuals. If they have a public presence and they exist in the public sphere as a character, but they also have a private personality that is linked to it, they will have the option of messaging me if I make a video about them and if they request it, I will delete the video and wipe it from the platform. That's if they associate their real life with their online persona. If they do not, like this video right here, then it's a much more complicated process because I'm not really talking about a private person, I'm talking about a public personality that usually doesn't have any ties to their real life, but I'll, I'll explain later why it might be relevant in that case too. Why do I want to make these videos? I want to make these videos because A, uh, I've spent so much brain power thinking about these people because I've been watching them for so long that I sort of felt like talking about it. And I think it's nice to exchange ideas with people who I know also watch them. And I also think it's fun to analyze people I also understand that some people might find it uh, intrusive, they might, uh, they might be uncomfortable about it, which is why I give the option to these people to delete the videos just by asking me. But we're starting with a pretty big fish. We're talking about NetherBeast today. Now, let me start by saying that I know for a fact that a lot of people who watch this channel watched his, meaning that they were subscribers to him before they subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be 100% truthful in this video. I'm not going to hold back my words. And if you get upset about it, if you still are attached to NetherBeast for a reason or the other, I understand 100%. It's your prerogative. If you think I'm overstepping my boundaries by making this video, you are free to stop watching me and you are free to unsubscribe. I'm making this video because I have a lot of things to say about the topic that are completely relevant to my channel and to natural bodybuilding as a whole. Let me also say that NetherBeast is one of these rare unicorns that I was not privy of when they started, meaning that a lot of underground channels uh, that people discover later on because they get a shout out for a reason or the other, I knew when this just started. I'm not going to name names for now, but a lot of the underground fitness channels that are becoming big nowadays, I used to watch them when they had 100 subscribers, like I am now. It wasn't the case with NetherBeast. I discovered him after the fact, after he was already gone. And I think that in a way, this is why I was so curious about him, because it was like a puzzle. It was like piecing together a mystery. I wanted to understand who he was, but his channel was gone. So to get his videos, I had to find mirror channels. I had to ask certain people who I knew had the videos. And I spent a lot of time doing that. I, it was like detective work. Um, it, this video you're watching right now is the video that required the most documentation and time for me to make. And it might sound counterintuitive, but I will not be citing my sources. I will not be giving you links to those videos just because I don't own them or the people of the channels have made them private and I got a link one way or the other. It's out there. If you want to look it up, it's out there. Everything I'm going to say I'm going to, is going to come from my research. I'm not lying about it, but feel free to believe me or not. So, let's see where we'll get, where we'll get started today. So, basically with NetherBeast, and this is where I should have maybe did things in the proper order, but I make this video because I, I, there's so much on my mind regarding that character. I've, I completed my research two days ago and uh, I just want to make a video and exp 
expose all of it. The reason why I want to do it is because I think a ton of people still see the name Ned Beast or his videos floating around on YouTube Fitness, but they don't, they don't understand 100% what was going on. And they might feel frustrated like I felt because they cannot piece it together. Well, I'm going to give you all the pieces because I found them all pretty much. So who was he? He was a 40 year old man who supposedly had been training for 20 plus years, who had accomplished uh, insane feats of strength uh, by his own admission and his own word, and who had a good physique. He claimed to be natural. He claimed to actually lift the way he lift. He claimed to have built his body with certain means and other claims of different natures. That we will actually discuss, even though it's a lifting channel. But I just want to lay out everything that he was so that you can see who that character represented and the, the type of, uh, of fakeness that he, he basically exuded so that you can recognize it again if you somehow stumble upon someone else's videos. That can also be applied to my channel. So let's start by saying certain things. He presented himself as someone who rejected uh, dogmatism. He was anti-dogmatism, meaning what? Meaning that he was supposedly that open-minded man who was going to listen to any opinion, who was willing to try anything. And anyone who wasn't like this, uh, funnily enough, was rejected. That is a very common paradigm of tolerance because being tolerant means being intolerant of intolerance. It's the snake that bites its own tail and it was the case for him too because on one hand he would chastise people for not being open to his very out there ideas but he also was strictly opposed to certain things. For example, he rejected the big three. He was the person who made several videos saying that the big three were bad lifts, they were not efficient for hypertrophy, etc., etc. And this is a common, uh, a common theme you will see with pathological liars. They are not able to just lie. They're not able to come up with logical reasons for their illogical choices. They always sleep up and they let you know the real reason behind the lie. So for him, even though he tried really hard to present it as, a, as based in experience, he often admitted that he hated the big three because he couldn't get in position for them because his form was bad. And this is where his hatred of the deadlift comes from. If you've watched his videos, you will have known that he detested the conventional deadlift. And he claimed it was because it was unathletic, it was dangerous, etc. The real reason why is because he couldn't deadlift to save his life, because he couldn't get into the proper position. There is nothing wrong with that. For me, it's the sumo deadlift. I cannot sumo deadlift. But do I go around claiming that the sumo is dangerous for the spine? No. But that's common in people who have no integrity. They will find scientific reasons to back up their own personal bias. And yet, if you are just slightly knowledgeable about the entire Netherbeast thing, you know him for faking, uh, faking big three lifts, where he did variations of the big three with insane amount of weights, and it was proven to be fake. It's funny to see that even though he hated the big three, he couldn't help but recognize that they were, they were valuable tests of strength. And therefore, when he cheated to showcase his strength, he picked the big three. So again, it's, it was a, a fault in his logic that he didn't realize would get him caught, I think. But it did. And to go back 
And that's something that uh, cult leaders do a ton. I'm not saying he was a cult leader, but he definitely had the qualities of one. He was created what is called an in-group, meaning that you start with a small amount of people and the people who want to join in have to follow the customs and the behaviors of the people from the in-group. If they do not, you cast them out. You don't just cast them out by saying, oh, your ideas do not reflect the ones of the in-group, therefore you're not welcome. Because that would be an admission that the ideas of the in-group might be faulty and subjective. No, what you say is that the ideas of the in-group are good because they are open to new challenges, because they are the ones who are a reflection of the true universe. And anyone who isn't open to that is therefore a hater and part of the out-group. This is a behavior that is not only specific to Netherbeast. Every single fitness YouTuber, whether they want it or not, whether they want to admit it or not, showcases the same behavior. And sometimes it's not their fault. Sometimes it's their subscribers who create an in-group. Go on any page of any famous fitness YouTuber and post a comment that is not 100% positive. Post a comment that is not just being basically a nut hugger and watch the response you get from the subscribers. The YouTuber itself will not even have to move the small finger of the hand. They won't even have to type a response. They will have fans do it for them. This is what I talk about when I say I'm in group. And the way Netherbeast created that in group because of his whole shtick was that if you accepted his ideas, if you accepted his methods, then you were open minded. If you rejected them, it made you close-minded. And if you don't believe me, there are videos up, very easy to find, that are not beyond any private walls, that you can just search on, on the YouTube, typing Netherbeast, and you will clearly hear him say things like, if you like me, you're a good person and open-minded. If you don't like me, you're a hater. This is him sleeping up again, and basically revealing his plan, revealing what he was doing, willingly or not. I don't know if he was actually planning anything. I think so. And I'm going to let you know why I think that what he was doing, I think, was 100% on purpose. Because when you create an in-group, you create a circle of trust that is going to prevent challenging opinions to arise. That is extremely valuable if you have something to sell. Why? Because if no one is able to critique what you sell without immediately being casted out of the group and being rejected by the in-group who are following you, then your base that is going to be purchasing that product is going to be 100% on board. Whether they buy it or not, there is no outside perspective to challenge it. If you want to see what I mean, uh, you can, a good comparison for that would be uh, certain websites that have reviews. And uh, just look at the way the reviews are organized so that the top reviews are easier to access than the ones that are graded uh, less. Why? Because the site wants to sell. They don't want negative reviews to be completely invisibilized, but they want them to be as... as, uh, as uh, invisible as possible okay so i'm saying that he was doing that because he wanted the in group to be receptive to a potential marketing scheme what was the scheme anyone who's watched one of his q a can answer that question the scheme was his ebook the netherbeast uh, the upgrade the netherbeast upgrade whatever he called it which was a book that was supposedly there to help you feel better, to improve your health, etc., etc. Whether you liked him or not, whether you believed him in, in, in him or not, whether you believe the ebook was good or not, you cannot deny the fact that he was pimping the ebook every chance he got. It was like a meme. I know people who don't like him say that Alpha Destiny was pimping his uh, enhanced 
uh, program um, naturally enhanced. I don't, but compared to what Netovis was doing, uh, it was nothing. Netovis was basically plugging the ebook every five sentences. And this is where I get to the part that makes me mad. Because if he truly was what he said he was, if he truly was a shaman of health, if he truly was on, put on earth to help people, he would have uploaded the ebook for free. He wouldn't have people pay 50 bucks for it. He would have made sure that it was widely available and he would have spammed it for free everywhere. He didn't. He had a paywall. Why? Because he wanted money. He wanted to make a profit out of it. You can say what you want. You can say, oh, it's a capitalist country. It's a capitalist world. A man has to eat. Yeah, a man has to eat. But when the man presents himself as the, the second coming of Jesus, then it's highly hypocritical. And that's also where I'm saying that his Q&As were not there to help people. Not at all. The Q&As were there to sell the ebooks, And I have a striking proof of that. Watch his Q&As. Watch how mad he would get if a question was repeated. Like if someone asked the same question twice or asked the question that was already asked once. Watch how mad he would get. Now, watch the same Q&As and look at the amount of times the same questions about supplements are repeated again, again, and again. He never gets mad because he gets to plug his ebook. So he had no reason to be mad. He actually loved those questions. This is why in every single Q&A, there is the same question about supplementation 10 times that he never cancels or edits out because it benefits him. And after that, we can also talk about his temper, because at least for me, this was someone for me who, I'm not going to say was a sociopath, but wasn't quite right. And if you want to understand what I mean by that, go watch his interview with Alex from Alpha Destiny and watch the first two minutes. Don't look at Alex, look at him. And look at his face as he speaks. Look at the way the emotions show on the face. Don't listen to the voice. Look at the eyes and the smile. Especially the smile. At some point, Alex gives him a compliment. And he has that smile that comes up on his face that is like... Basically, like a, look like a predator. It wasn't the smile of happiness of being proud. It was the smile of someone who just got praised and who understands that it's good for business or that it's good for self-gain. Why do I say that? I say that because the character of someone on camera is important. It's easy to fake who you are. It really is. You watch me, you might have watched tens of videos of me, but you don't know who I am. Maybe I'm just a very good actor. For him too, he wasn't a good actor. Why? Because... His temper slipped out a ton on camera and he never edited out. And if you go back to his older videos, he would have massive uh, jumps in uh, aggressivity randomly. And uh, that, there's a reason for that. And I'm going to get to that. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Should I talk about that or not? We're going to segue into something else and then get to that. Let's talk about his strength claims. Neto Beast claimed to be able to squat 900 pounds for two. He claimed to be able to bench 500 pounds. He claimed to be able to deadlift 1,000 pounds. Basically, his strength claims for anyone who had any idea of what strength is were bogus but for me that that wasn't really what pushed me over the head with him because i'm a bodybuilder i don't really care about strength i don't like liars but that type of lie doesn't hurt me too much doesn't get to me too much what really got to me was his fake size claims now this is a subject where i know a lot and I can tell, like, you show me BS and I can tell you it's BS. 
The claims that this guy tried to push were so outlandish that I really wonder what was going through people's mind who couldn't see through it. Because I found videos of him posing, I found videos of him flexing his arms. He claimed to have 21 inches arms. Do you understand how big 21 inches is? See that part here? That's my leg. Right there, it's 26 inches. 21 inches is five inches smaller than that. It's gigantic. He obviously didn't have 21 inches arms. He, I never could find a video of him taping his arms, so of course he never proved it. If someone has the video, please show it to me. But he would have been lucky to have 17 inches arms. His arms were fairly, not small, but they were nothing impressive. And this is especially bad considering the fact that he wasn't natural. We know for a fact he wasn't natural. Why? Because he has been caught reviewing pro hormones in the past and the videos are still out there. They're behind private walls, but they're out there. And you can find them if you ask the right people. And he clearly states in the videos he took them. So he wasn't natty. And the reason why it's so important is because, in my opinion, once you get caught lying about one thing, you can never be trusted again. So if he said he was, he was natty, but he actually wasn't, we have no idea the amount of drugs he was actually taking. He could have been on a lot of stuff, and I think he was. And the reason why I say that is because he had a channel a year ago where he completely gave up, gave up on lifting, he was doing other stuff, but you could still see his face in these videos. He lost maybe 40 pounds in these videos. He shrunk. All of the neck gains, the shoulders, all of it was completely gone in these videos. Now, maybe, just maybe, he got sick. Maybe he got sick. Maybe I'm, I'm a joke and I'm saying that a man who got very sick lost his gains. And if it's, that's the case, yes, it's regrettable. But considering that he's the person who was pushing supplements, saying that he had unbreakable health, that his ebook would make you invincible, what happened then? Why, is, why, was, why did he get sick? Did he run out of, out of uh, coffee enemas? What happened? But what happened was he went off cycle. For a reason or the other, he stopped taking those products and he lost everything which is a sign of a fake natty and a sign of someone who doesn't know anything about lifting. Because if you need products to build an impressive physique, you know nothing about lifting. So, now that that's out of the way, the reason why I bring that up after the measurement part is because his measurements for someone who was taking drugs were extremely pathetic. He had a great back. I'm not going to argue with that. He had a very impressive back. But 17 inches arms. His legs were, if he was lucky, 21, 22 inches. He had chicken legs. Even that is generous. Maybe 20 inches legs. So he basically had a trunk. He is the epitome of what I criticize when I say that people don't know how to balance their physiques. He was all trunk and no limbs. On drugs. 20 years on drugs. How do you end up looking like this? And look at the way he's looking now. That's his real body. That's the way he's supposed to look without the PED crutch, which is basically a guy who doesn't lift. So that's, that's the biggest part of the argument for me. And I'm going to, outside of the fact that he's a, a, a big fat liar, the reason why it is so bad is because he hurt other people. Whether you want to believe that or not, he hurt other people. Why? Because he presented himself as that natural lifter who had been at it for so long, that had pushed the natural limits, that was even better than some PD users. He was strong, he was shredded, but it was all a lie. What do you think that has done to people who trusted him? What do you think that has done to natural lifters who followed him from the get-go and looked up to him? These people were already live in a world where people are demoralized, who believe in nothing. And he 
came and said the same thing I just said, he would tell people, oh, it, you're limiting yourself, believe in yourself, keep pushing. All of it to end up being a fake fraud. So not only did he hurt these people, but he also hurt natural bodybuilding as a whole. Because people are going to now be convinced that it's not doable. Why? Because he's another fake natty who's been caught lying. And who wasn't honest when he got caught. And this is where I'm so upset with it. Because honestly, the way he ran his channel and the way I run mine are very similar. We have similar ideas about natural bodybuilding. We both believe that you can look amazing being natural. We, can, we both believe that you can push the limits, that there is no such thing as limits. But now, he's basically the, the perfect ref reflection of what I don't want to become. Because he gave up on his own ideas, clearly, because he jumped on drugs. And outside of the fact that he was clearly using his drugged up physique to sell the ebook, because that's what he was doing. When someone tells you, I have the cure to X thing, most likely they make a gain from the cure and therefore they created the illness. Meaning what? You watch Nether Beast and he's bigger than you and stronger than you and you think, wow, what do I do wrong that he does right? And he tells you, oh, nothing. Just, just buy my ebook. Just take the products I take. It's going to clean your body up. You're going to be just like me, which was a lie. So he lied for profit. And I guarantee you that no one who bought the book got refunded for it. So he was playing on the insecurities of natural lifters, which are as far as the eye can see because we are bombarded by pictures of guys on PEDs who are bigger than us and stronger than us and look better than us and we're sort of on that raft on the ocean with the other naturals looking at each other like are we going to make it to the promised land and we don't know and then the land nether beast from the island is like yeah you can come guys but he's not on the island he's on a boat I don't know where that metaphor is going but that was something that motivated me to make that video. Why? Because he, he wasn't slick. Like, let's not pretend that he was a super intelligent guy and that everyone was caught in his net and trap of lies. No, he was very easy to crack. He made mistakes all the time. But people wanted to believe so badly that he was natural that they were willing to completely overlook it. Never do that. If something is suspicious, call it out. If the person you call out blocks your comment or refuses to answer, maybe something fishy is going on. And I just said here that he was playing on the insecurities of natural lifters. The reason why he did that was because he was insecure himself about the way he looked. He, the entire thing was ego driven and that it exists on every YouTube channel. And it exists here too. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not like this too. We want to be appreciated for our hard work and our hard work is devolved through strength or the way our body looks. He built his body using products and he was receiving praises based on that. He had a superhero complex. He wanted people to see him as that unattainable being, but it didn't work. Why? Because on the other hand, he desperately needed to let people know that they could look like him. And therefore, what he was, he was trapped between having a massive ego that needed to be satisfied at all times and have followers and showing people that it was attainable so that they would buy the ebook. And the proof of that, in a sense, is that his way around that was claiming that he had been training for a long time. That was his way to temper the enthusiasm of his followers because, of course, he was on there for like a year. So some people might have taken the same things he took for eight months and not gotten any result and asked, hey, how, what gave? And he, Nether Beast would have just answered, oh, it's because you didn't wait long enough. I've been, waiting, I've been training for 20 years, 30 years. But there are videos of him from 2015 and he wasn't buff. He was just a normal, normal looking guy in a shirt 
So what does, what does that mean? Well, he gained all his mass on PEDs. And therefore, the entire thing was a hoax. It was a scam. It was a way to sell that stupid book. Book, by the way, which I got a copy of, it's full of links. There's almost no information. It's as if you went to me and, I don't know, you went to an hospital and asked for a, 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 a flu shot. And the person gives you a page from a book with a recipe to make a flu shot and, and waved you on your way. That's not how it works. Well, that was the ebook. The ebook was about that. He also had a persecution complex that I think is fairly obvious, where he felt like he was being attacked by everyone. Uh, he claimed several times that the government was at his door, that the government shut down his YouTube channel, as if the government cared about a guy who has a few thousand subscribers. There are YouTube channels on online today with thousands of subscribers of people who make like national level threats and nothing happens. So a guy saying that you need to eat herbs to cure your cancer is not going to be arrested by the government. One thing too that could, would have been okay that I'm not against in YouTube fitness is he offered consultations for money. Meaning that he would Skype with you one-on-one -on -one and un listen to your problems and he would give you solutions. Why does it not work with him? A, because he's a liar and B, because there are proofs. I've done some digging on this and I've talked to some people. He would make tailored programs for people. He would make them pay and make them a specific program just for them. And you know what he did? He copy pasted those programs because when those people got together, they realized that the programs were similar meaning that he was sending the same templates to everyone. Putting a template online and saying, hey, that's one template. If you want to do it, do it. It's cool. That's fine because it's free. But if someone pays you good money to have something specific and you just send them a cookie cutter program, that's a scam. And it gets even worse because not only did he do that, but he then made a, a, a bundle on his website thingy where he sold the ebook, where you could get all of the programs he, he prepared for his clients. And basically in the bundle was three templates and the three templates were basically the three that he would send people for specific programs. So double scam. And now we get into the really shady, nefarious, don't write disgusting stuff about Netherbeast. He preyed on the fears of sick people and offered to heal their wounds using herbs and shaman ritual. This goes beyond the realm of just being a liar and a clown. This goes, this is criminal. Taking someone who is suffering from cancer and who's desperate because they're in pain from the treatment and they don't know if they're going to die and telling them, oh, I can cure you with my magic herbs. Just don't listen to the establishment and the, the doctors. Just take my herbs. I've seen people die from it. I've seen people who listen to that type of scams, started taking herbs and died a awful death in, in unimaginable pain. Those people selling those herbs should be jailed. And he should suffer some consequences for that because it's insanely shady. And I know freedom of choices. People are free to do whatever. Well, preying on people like this, whether you believe in absolute liberty or not, doesn't sit right with me. And now, let's talk about another thing that makes him a clown and that is extremely makes me wonder why people didn't realize he was. So he faked his squat, his deadlifted his bench with reverse bends. We already know that. I don't spend too much time on that because it's already been exposed. One thing that I've never really heard people talk about, some people do, his chin-ups, the one-arm chin-ups. He clearly jumped from the floor. And it's not just me thinking that. There are actual tangible proofs of that. 
Let's start with my own experience. I was a calisthenic only athlete before. I, at some point, was able to do one-arm chin-ups. I was 160, I had no legs and no lower body, and I could do like two. Once I was 170, I couldn't do one anymore. And I know what it looks like. A one-arm chin-up doesn't look like a two-arm chin-up. Your body is in a different angle. The way the body moves is different. The way the lockout happens is different. And there was a guy who claimed to be 240, cranking out one-arm chin-ups, and no one got suspicious, really, when you can clearly see that he jumps off from the floor and the camera angle was just focused on the top portion. And the reason, I, so that's from my experience, but the reason why I say I have proof is, there is a video of him still online doing one-arm chin-ups where you can actually see his lower body and he has to use straps. He's not doing chin-ups, he's grabbing the bar in this angle and he's doing like quarter reps. And even doing quarter reps, he had to kick his knees up to get his body weight up. And he gets like three pathetic reps and then let's go. How could people believe that someone who was incapable of doing three chitty, one third of the range of motion arm chin-ups was able to rep it for like 10 times? It makes no sense. He was clearly faking it, which means that every single feat of strength he did was fake. All of it. And the rest was partial range of motion rack pulls, which mean nothing. So he had nothing to show for. The body was fake. The strength was fake. And now we get into the why. Why did he do that? What was the point of that? Well, one, the money, as I explained, he wanted money. Why did he want money? He clearly says in his video he's not employed. So he was basically sitting around at home all day, I guess. So that was a way to make a quick buck off of idiots and people who were desperate for help that he preyed on. And I think he also probably was mentally ill. I think he had something going on here. Uh, and I think it might have been made worse by the PDUs because if you watch his latest videos, when he lost all the weight, he is not the same person. He's now very soft, very soft-spoken. I think all the fire that we saw in his videos was basically the exogenous testosterone in his body. And he said in plenty of videos that he had tons of mental illnesses that he wouldn't get consultation from. He just said that he would deal with that by himself. And, I, and even though I resent him and what he did to the natural bodybuilding community, what he did to people who were sick. I feel for him because I think he was a very, very sad person. I think he had very low self-esteem and he wanted to, I think he wanted to believe in something else in, in that a higher being so hard that he basically convinced himself. And this is where, I tie it back to the natural bodybuilding thing. We all want to believe in something bigger, uh, even outside of bodybuilding. We all want to believe that there is something more. Why? Because if there isn't, this world is extremely boring and there's no magic anymore. The reason why it's so great to be a kid is because everything is possible. Being an adult is the opposite. Nothing is possible anymore. This is the reason why religion is there to stay because people need to believe in something and People who don't believe in anything don't live happy lives. So his thing was that. His thing was that he was a mental Jedi and that he could, he could talk to spirit gods and that, uh, that uh, ex, uh, extraterrestrial beings would visit him and, and heal his body because he was special. That was his thing. And he was speaking to people who were also like this and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you have to find that one thing that you believe in to make that life worth living. But he was selling fake dreams to these people and I don't know what those people are anymore. I know some of them watch my channel. If you want to testify in the comments, uh, I'm going to say it outright. I have a very good memory. So I know exactly who you guys are. I know your names. I'm just not going to out you because I'm not, attacking people who watched him. Uh, actually, yeah, I felt sad for people who watched him and who believed him. But yeah, if you want in the comments to let me know what your experience was with watching him, let me know. 
So yeah, I'm not going into too much details about, you know, the, the space stuff and his ability to astro project and all of that. It's, I think it's not as important. I'm going to pause the video for one second. Sorry about that. So, wrapping up this video because I've already said most of the things that I need to say. So to finish it off, my issue too is that, as I said, because he associated his image with that mentality of pushing the natural limits, guys like me are going to suffer from it because we're going to be associated with him. And he also did that to legitimate methods of health and progress. He did that for blood restriction, meaning that now if you go on YouTube Fitness and you talk about blood restriction, people are going to tell you that, oh, Nether Beast pushed it too, so it must be BS. He did it for raw garlic. He did it for tons of food that were actually good. And that's, I think, the part where most people are cross with him. He actually had good information. He had good stuff to say. If you watch his Q&A, some things in there are good. But because he was exposed as a fraud, now all of the good things he's talked about are going to be regarded as some EP no nonsense thing that doesn't have a place where it has. And I, I'm still going to talk about those methods, but I'm just mad because he, he soiled them. I spoke about the superhero complex, which is not a bad thing to have as long as you stay real. I mean, I lift because I want to look like an anime character. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to engineer fake size just to be someone I'm not. I'm going to work so that I can become that person. And, and here is where I also give him some, some leeway. I know the reason why he faked those lifts. It's, it is because YouTube is powerlifting centric. And that if you claim to be strong, but you don't squat, bench and deadlift, people are going to badger you until you do these lifts. Which is why he tested his strength on it. Because he gave up. He gave up and uh, the pure pressure was too strong. And for someone who pretended to be a, a pack leader and a lone wolf, that's pretty funny. You can go on my channel and ask me, I don't know, ask me for a full year to do low bar squats. I don't want to do low bar squats. I want to do low bar squats. That's it. And the reason why he was doing all those odd lifts with partials is because he was masking his true strength. He wasn't that strong. I'm not saying he was weak, but he wasn't that strong at all. He did lifts that no one else did so that you couldn't compare his strength. Like for example, on my channel you will see me do uh, static holds, like front racks, and I'll do that with 500 pounds. But if you type front rack static hold on YouTube, you will find Olympic, we Olympic weightlifter who do that with 700 pounds easy. So it's, it's, it's impossible for me to claim that I'm strong because you can clearly see that I'm not. But if I call them something else, right? If I call them a, a, an exotic name, then you wouldn't be able to look it up and most people don't know what they are. So you would think, wow, he's holding 500 pounds in the rack position. He must be super strong, even though it's not strong at all. And we're going to finish with the cherry on top of the cake. Ah, before that, he was pushing certain lifts that were just downright dangerous. Like the nether sh chest shrugs, all that stuff. If you look it up, it puts the shoulders in a very compromised position. It's the best way to snap a tendon. It's, it's terrible. Some people can do them safely, but he basically presented these lifts as a replacement for the bench. And it's, it's just not true. And to finish, he fled like a coward. This is the epitome of YouTube fakery. It's someone comes in, lies, lies and lies more. And when they get exposed, they leave. Honestly, if he had just accepted the fact that he was a liar and just said, yes, I'm a liar. I'm sorry about being a liar. Please forgive me. It would be okay. I know people who lied longer than him, who are worse people than him, who would still basically be forgiven if they accepted uh, the, all the lies that they said and they just 
apologize, but they never do because they are pathological liars. It never happens. So I think this video is long enough. I'm talked about it. I've talked about it long enough. This is my honest... Oh boy, this is going to die. Give me one second. This is my honest opinion on Netherbeast. This is all of the information I was able to gather. It took me around, I want to say, four months to gather all this information. If you want to know more about certain aspects that I didn't develop, you can ask in the comments. The lesson to take from it, never trust anyone on YouTube Fitness. If you watch someone, watch them for the content and the information you can get from them to benefit your life. Don't watch it for them. If it's a channel that's supposed to be entertainment, then yes, you're going to watch for the personality of the person. But if it's supposed to be knowledge-based, then in that case, don't idolize the person behind the knowledge. We're just flesh vessels. We're not important. This is the reason why I don't give out my name. This is the reason why I, don't, I never want you to behave like that on this channel. Because unlike Netherbeast, who was stuck between trying to sell his stupid ebook and trying to be a superhero at the same time and be worshipped, I'm nothing special. I'm a completely average guy and I got where I was because I work hard. That's it. That's 100% of the people can attain that. Uh, and I won't, I don't sell you anything. The day I start selling you stuff on this channel, start being very worried. So that's pretty much that. YouTube fitness is a dark place. People make money out of it and of course are going to lie to achieve that money. So keep your eyes open, pay attention. And uh, take that Netherbeast case profile as an example of the, the, the type of personalities you're going to encounter at all on this platform. Because at the worst case scenario, you're just going to be lied to, but there's always the chance that you're going to be hurt by these people because you're going to follow their advice. So that's that for this video. It's something that a video that I wanted to make for a long time and I'm glad it's done. I'm not going to edit it. Uh, I might revisit it in the future, but I just wanted to put it out there so that if people want to look up who Netherbeast was, they can listen to this. And as far as Netherbeast goes, I know he's still somehow sometimes active on these online platforms. If you watch that video, fix yourself. Focus. You've spoken about true health on your platform, but you've never really known what it was. Focus on it. Focus on yourself. I think you have deeply rooted mental issues and you need to address them. And using drugs is not going to make you feel better about yourself. You need something else. So that's that for the video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.